Hi, I'm Chris Cooper. Welcome to the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Thanks for joining us. We've been dormant for a couple of months this winter, but we're back in time to help get your lawn and garden ready for spring. It won't be long until all kind of insect pests start to drive us crazy. For centuries, horticultural oils have been an important tool in managing certain pest problems. If you haven't done it already, now is the time to apply dormant oil. So Mr. D is here to give us some tips on how, when, and where to use it. And it won't be long until we start seeing those annoying weeds popping up all over our lawns, unless we listen to Booker T. Lee. He's here to help us get a jump start on a beautiful green lawn. All of that and more is coming up next on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, so stay with us. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation, the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. So to get us off to a good start in the new year, Mr. D is here. Glad to be here. And helping us out with our lawn care issue, Mr. Booker T. Lee. Glad to be here. All right, yeah. Booker's the extension agent right here in Shelby County. Thanks for joining me. I'm oh, glad to be here, Chris. All right, y'all ready to get it kicked off for the new year? You ready to get it kicked off? Let's do it. You guys have been dormant. I've been, I've been hibernating. <laughs> You've been hibernating? I've been hibernating this way. Hey, it's there's been, been some good weather to hibernate in. It's been a cold, Ooh. long, cold winter. Cold, man. man. I've never seen tough. this in a long time. I, I think uh, this is a real winter this time. This is a real winter. We need a real winter for a while, though. But. All right, now speaking of winter, there are a number of pests you can control with dormant oil. Now is the time to do that. Okay, so Mr. Exactly. D, what do we need to know about dormant oil? Okay, uh, most of the dormant oils or the horticultural oils out there are uh, derived from petroleum sources mm -hmm. or, or they're min derived from mineral oils. And uh, they do a real good job of controlling several of the insect pests that overwinter on the bark of, you know, tree yeah. trees. And examples of those include some of the mites, aphids, and things like that. Some of the caterpillar uh, eggs, like uh, eastern tent caterpillar that we're going to be seeing in a, in a few yeah. weeks. Uh, yeah. The oils help control those too. Uh, they also have some activity, some fungicidal activities on hmm. some of the fungal, fungal diseases. For example, powdery mildew and okay. some of those things like that they have some activity on. Um, but now is a good time to put them out there provided uh, you meet the temperature restrictions right. on the label. Uh, if it's going to be below freezing, uh, you don't need to apply it. And, and the main reason is if the temperatures are below 32 degrees when you put the oil out there, it doesn't disperse as well. And uh, so you won't get as good a coverage and sure. it won't work as well. It's not going to hurt the plant that you put it on. Okay. Uh, also, you don't need to put it out there if it's over 100 degrees. <laughs> and I don't think that's going to be a problem. I don't think this happens. And, uh, and when, when you put, you know, summer oils out there or the lighter oils out there, um, you want to don't want to do that when the temperature is over 100 degrees because that could possibly hurt the plant. The plant's stressed anyway at that time. Okay. And you may have some phytotoxic problems. And uh, but we're not worried about that right now. Not right now. Um, now let me ask you this: What's what's the best temperature then? Uh, the best temperature would be between 32 and 100 degrees. Okay. You know, <laughs> pretty much anywhere in that right. range. You know, okay. uh, uh, so basically we're talking about if you get get the temperatures up in the you know 40s and, and 50s and okay. you know uh, you'll be okay, and even the upper 30s. But uh, uh, you just make sure you get good spray coverage. These uh, oils have changed over the years, and they become better. They're they're more refined. Uh, they have a, uh, 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 things in them that help them disperse and make them somewhat water soluble. Uh, so they, they do a pretty good job. They, do, they evaporate fairly quickly. Mm, they're, they're, they won't hurt beneficial insects okay. and, and, and uh, they, they are fairly, you know, they don't hurt people either. You okay. know, they aren't toxic to people. So it's a good tool to use. It's one of the best tools that you can use in the wintertime. And I highly recommend that you do that with, especially your fruit trees. 
Uh, you know, if you have problems with aphids on, on your shades mm. and, you know, other woody plants, you know, you, yeah. can, you can use it too but with those dormant plants. Okay. And I guess, like you said before, coverage is Coverage very is very good, you know, very important to make sure you get good coverage. You know, you can use the same equipment that you use uh, to put out, you know, other pesticides. You, your, your sprayers will do a, a good job, okay. you know, regular sprayers, solo backpacks and, and pump-up type sprayers will do a good job putting the product out. Okay, and this would be good for your azalea lace bugs because I know we will right. get that question coming up mm -hmm. here That's pretty exactly soon. That's exactly right. That that one of one of those. I mean, it'll help help with that. Okay. Uh, again, but you really really need to make sure you get the apply that to the underside of the leaves. Yes. You make yes. sure you get good coverage on the underside of the azalea lace. Okay. Uh, so we have dormant oil, summer oil, spray oil. What's the difference between the three? Well, uh, of course, dormant oils. At one time, dormant oils were a heavier oil, and uh, now, because the oils are so refined, you can pretty much use, uh, you know, the term dormant oil yeah. simply means that you apply it during dormancy. Uh, we really use mu uh, the pretty much the same oils uh, in the summer as the winter time because they're so well refined okay. now. Summer oil simply means, if it's on the label, it means that's the time of the year that you apply it. So really not any difference between okay. a summer oil and a dormant oil other than when you apply it. And, um, uh, the uh, spray oils that you're talking about. Now these are these are oils that you mix with uh, with pesticides to uh -huh. uh, to uh, increase or improve their effectiveness. Okay. And um, uh, so I know on the herbicides we use out there on the farm, we always use crop oil concentrates mm -hmm. and things like that. And and some of the herbicides basic, basically say you must do that for them to be effective. So you really really need to read the label and sure. uh, and uh, and uh, uh, you know follow the label with okay. oils like you do with anything else. And what was the other, you said those are the three? Those are the three. Those are yeah. pretty much the three. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you this, can I make my own dormant oil? Oh you can, you can. <laughs> Funny you should mention. Sure I can, huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, th w there is a, I've got a couple of recipes here. Cornell, <laughs> Cornell has one. Uh, and these are real recipes. These are real <laughs> yeah, recipes. Golly. You know, I, I, could, I can actually show you a picture of this, but uh, I've got three or four three or four recipes here. Uh, the uh, one from uh, Cornell, basically you mix uh, ultra fine canola oil. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what ultra fine <laughs> canola oil is. I know that canola oil is a fine product, an ultra fine product probably, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's readily available and, and very, you know, very commonly used out there, but one tablespoon of baking soda mixed with a gallon of water and two tablespoons of ultra-fine wow. canola oil. Uh, will. So, so this is an example of a, 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 a horticultural oil which is not a base, it doesn't have a mineral oil base, it's got a vegetable oil base. Okay. And those work pretty well too. And, okay. and these recipes, most of them are using vegetable oils. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Cornell also has a, a well, this is a nourishing formula, which also has <laughs> insecticidal and fungicidal properties, okay. yeah. which has two tablespoons of horticultural oil, so that would be a so, mineral-based yeah. mineral yeah. yeah. oil, and a tablespoon of baking soda, a tablespoon of kelp, <laughs> seaweed, seaweed, dried seaweed, I guess, uh -huh. and a tablespoon of mild dish soap mixed with a gallon of water. Yeah. Uh, another recipe is two tablespoons of baking soda, five tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide. Mm, wow. So I guess we're going to bleach them <laughs> yeah. out a little bit. <laughs> make, make them all blonde. <laughs> two, two tablespoons of Castile soap, wow. which is made from olive oil, and a gallon of water. So this one would be a, wow. a, a vegetable oil based okay. you know, product here. And then uh, another is a tablespoon of vegetable cooking oil and one teaspoon of non degreasing liquid dishwashing detergents. So that means don't use Dawn. Okay. Wow. So non-degreasing. Now, yeah. who, what is a non-degreasing dishwashing detergent? Why would you want one that wouldn't break grease down? Mm, Probably one you won't be able to look, buy. May want to yeah, check, check out that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> about look a little harder at that yeah. one right there. All right. Thanks, Mr. D. We definitely appreciate that information. Good deal. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you.
All right, Booker, let's see if we can uh, help the people out with their lawns. It's that time of year again. Hey, we're getting close to that time. Man, huh? I get, get to pull that lawnmower out again and get that start that two or three week of cutting. It's we're, coming soon, man. <laughs> we're we're going to let him have that, you know, yeah. cutting twice no, a week. Man, yeah, that's, you can have that. That's, that's my exercise, man. You know, you need to get out there and cut that grass two or three times a week and just really enjoy it. Like I said, one thing I hate when I get out there, I don't have no gas to get ready to get started. <laughs> but I, but I, I'm getting ready for it again. We're going to have to get you some gas. Give me some gas when I get started and, and, and everything. So. All right, I'm well, let's get started like, on a couple of questions. Okay, right? let's do that then. Here's the first one. Is it too late to put down a pre-emerge herbicide on my lawn? And that's a standard question that we actually get you know, uh, this time of the year. So what do you think? Well, pre-emerge, let, let them know what a pre-emerge is. Okay. Pre-emerge sure. prevent the weeds from germinating. You uh -huh. know, just to put it down. Now, for your winter weeds now, it's probably just a little too late. But right. for some of your summer weeds that begin to come up, I go and put it down because it's a kill. What's, it's a, it'll kill the seed before it germinates. Mm -hmm. But your winter weeds are already up. It's not going to kill what's already up. It'll prevent seed from germinating. For your summer weeds that begin to come up later on, it, it'll do that. Okay. So right now, go and put that pre emerge down in your lawn. And you know, one thing about a pre emerge uh, you need to water it in. Okay. And I try to time mine when I know it's going to rain. <laughs> you know, I look at the weather and say, I need to put some down now. Okay. Then make sure I get it watered in. I don't want to come out there and have to put that water hole out again. And they think I know you got some more cold weather coming right. in, you know, in there. So I would just wait on the rain. Okay. Because most of it comes in a granular form. Granular form, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And one thing we put in a pre mirror down, make sure you get it on the lawn. Don't let it get on the sidewalk right. and everything like that, you know, wash into the drain. Right. No, just make sure you get it on your lawn, mirror, set the skate, uh, your spread for it to get right on the lawn. Okay. Because a lot of times we waste a lot of fertilizer and stuff putting it on the sidewalk. Should so do. we don't want to do that when you put your pre mirror down. Yeah, that's a good point. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what's at the end? Of it, that fish, yeah. fish yeah, and goes and down water the and everything. So. That's why we get a lot of things they taking off the market because they didn't find it in the water and all that. So we need to make sure that we use it correctly. All right. Mm -hmm. Here's a second question: Can I seed my lawn after using a pre-emerge herbicide? <laughs> a pre-emerge don't know different. You don't know, you don't know different from a seed, a uh, weed seed, or uh, grass seed. Right. So you need. I I wouldn't put it down then. I read the label just to make sure that it's a waiting period before I can oversee my grass with a, a, a seed. And just tell you on there, so it might have wait uh, six weeks or something before you can oversee it again with a grass seed. Okay. But you put it down right then, you, be you still out there wondering, where my seed, where my grass seed, it's not coming up. <laughs> but what it happens, you don't put a pre mirror down, it'll prevent that from germinating also. So make sure that you read the label before you wait and put a, a grass seed and after you put a pre mirror down, or vice versa, versa. You don't want to do it either way. So you need to make sure that you read the label on that. Okay. But I wouldn't put it down, no, I'll wait a while. Before I do that. All right. Key mm -hmm. point. Pre emerge that know the difference between a grass seed, seed and, and a weed seed. seed. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Right. No, you never. But one of the things about it, you need to just read the label on there, right. it'll tell you the waiting period before you can do overseed. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What problems might I see this spring on my lawn from this cold winter? And it has been cold, <laughs> especially up your way. So, I mean, it's definitely been cold. One thing about, one thing about uh, grass, especially warm season grass, it's, it's, it's dormant. You know, it's not in active growth going down, but the root system is still, still alive. Right. You know, the, the top part that you're seeing is just really what dead. And the problem that you might see is you had some standing water somewhere, you know, on your lawn. You got a poor part that didn't drain well, and the water freezes over there for a period of time. And that maybe could damage the root system mm -hmm. or something like that because the water was frozen in there. But make sure you look in your lawn, make sure there's no standing water nowhere around. Okay. But grass... Zorgia grass and Bermuda grass, some tough grass. It should be okay and everything, but it should just come back. And you might see some product that might come back a little late because you had you just had standing water in there. Right. In there, but it, it should be okay. But this was cold one in there. It's been cold. No, this this it, it, no time we had. The only thing you might see now the people that might have been having this centipede grass and St. Augustine grass and this cold weather now they might see some uh, different in that. Okay. Probably it might be just too cold for that to hear. If it did, oh, the time we had. Okay. And that's different. But the Bermuda would be fine. Bermuda would be it's fine. It'd be tough grass. It'd no, be I, like the, I like Bermuda and Zorgia grass, and they're tough grass. <laughs> they don't survive. <laughs> All right. Can I put down fertilizer and lime at the same time? You, you can do that mm. now. You can put down at the same time. But one thing you'll do is do a soil test because uh -huh. the, the lime, you don't want to get it too high, you know, and everything in there. Yeah. So you might not need to add lime down if the pH already high in there. So, you, But the fertilizer... You foster and mm -hmm. They stay in the soil for a period of time. They don't break down like nitrogen fertilizer break down a period of time. But I'm trying to tell you that the best thing to do is do a soil test. There you if, go. You, if you need to put both of them down, you can't put them down together and anything there. It's not, not going to hurt anything. Okay. And, and uh, both of them probably, both of them need to be watered in over a period of time in there. 
and stuff in there. So make sure you do that in there. But do that soil test. We all recommend soil Always. test for what, seven dollars. Yes. You can't go wrong with that. You know, it's gonna give you a result back, and that's what's gonna and, and you know what to add to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if right. you need lime, you need to put it down anytime. Anytime. Yeah, anytime if you yeah. need lime, you need it now. The end, yeah, anytime. Uh, yeah. And the soil test is going to tell you that, but mm -hmm. it is too dang early to put fertilizer out right yeah, now. Yeah, especially yeah, fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah, you, did, uh, you know, I wouldn't put any special no, no nitrogen fertilizer on yeah. your lawn, you know, no nitrogen fertilizer in there because it, 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 with the weather going on, we might get some warm days again, though. Know, <laughs> probably then, might get some cold days. And you don't want to start bringing the Bermuda grass out and dormancy before time. Right. Yeah, no. Because that cold weather will knock it out. We'll knock it out. Winter kill then. Winter kill. Yeah, winter kill then. You'll see that when you'll see that this spring when it start beginning to come up. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Then. Yeah. That's that's good then. I had leaves left on my lawn all winter. Do I need to remove them? Yeah. I'm so glad I don't have no tree now. <laughs> 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 those but you had leaves on your lawn. You, you need to move those off there. You know. And uh, right now it's probably too wet to get the lawn mower right there and, 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 and yeah. cut them up. You know. But you can rake those off there and spread them over your vegetable garden. Just don't put them side the curb, put them where your vegetable garden, spread them over there. Or start your compost pile. Mm -hmm. That'd be a good thing to do, start a compost pile. But get those leaves off the lawn because what they did, it could be maddening it down and all the rain we've been having and the cold weather we're having, that could damage it right there. And over the period of time, you might see a, a, a kind of dead spot when it begin to come out, it might come back kind of slow. But get the, get those get those weeds get those leaves off the lawn and, and start them in a compost pile or put them over your vegetable garden. Right. And when you start tilling your vegetable garden up, they be already good compost. They already almost getting the right already. So right. that'll be good to add to your okay. to your soil and to get that some loose soil. But another thing, but don't go out in that garden and start working your garden now because it's too too wet. Okay, <laughs> too wet. It's too wet. Yeah. Yeah. Recycle your leaves. Recycle your leaves, man. That's good. Okay. That you throwing bag money. them up and put them on the curb. You throwing money recycle away. You throwing good money away. Yeah. You throwing, throwing it away. Fertilizer throwing, organic man, organic. fertilizer away. And then you just say that good fertilizer, is organic fertilizer. You can tell the difference in that garden soil when you begin mm -hmm. to work in it. All right. Uh, here's the next question. When is the best time to aerate? My warm season grass. The aerate is no. When you go out there, you, you begin to get some of that dead grass out of there. We just talking about, but you want to aerate your lawn just when it begins to start come out of dormancy. When you start seeing some new green begin to come in there, you want to aerate then. Okay. You don't want to aerate in the winter time because you're exposing the roof system to cold weather. Uh -huh. When you start in that in, in aerate, and aerate, you probably need to do it over like every three years. You know, unless you got a lot of traffic on your lawn, a lot of things that go on your lawn. And stuff in there, you might need to aerate and loosen that soil up because you're not getting that dead grass out of there. Because a lot of things that you're putting down, a lot of fertilizer that you're putting down, is not getting down to this root system. And that's why you need to aerate and loosen that soil to get all that dead uh, grass out of there. Okay. Another thing you know, I'll tell you, if you about aerating and compact soil, uh, if you got a, a lawn service, they're just something that's the lawn service, and they can they and they cutting your grass. And you know, normally you're on a schedule. When they cut your grass, if we have some rain or something that night, and then they come cut your grass in there, and they got they on that big tractor, and they they probably gonna pack those soil down just a little more <laughs> with that tractor going across there and they on there. So if you on a schedule and it rains, some I don't want to cut my grass really when the soil is kind of wet and going across there with that big tractor and stuff in there. Okay, it's good yeah. info, Dave. Mm -hmm. Actually, appreciate that, Booker. All right. Well, well thank you. All right, here's our Q and A session. <sighs> Hey, y'all ready for this? Ready for it. All right, here's our first question, which is a good question. I've heard this uh, quite a few times uh, over the winter. Do you think it's been cold enough to kill some of the bugs that we usually see in the spring? What do you think about that, Mr. D? You know, normally I say probably not, but I tell you, this winter uh -oh. has been Indeed. different. Hmm. Uh, one thing that I'm really looking forward to seeing is uh, you know, back when the fire ant line was slowly marching north, okay. when we would get a real cold winter and would freeze the ground down, you know, 8, 10, 12 inches, uh, it would always push that fire ant line back 50 or 60 miles, yeah. and then they would start marching back north okay. and, and with mild winters. And it's going to be interesting to see if, uh, if we have fewer fire ants in the northern part of the fire ant range mm -hmm. this year than we did last year. Uh, but... Uh, you know, we may have a few uh, early, we may have a few less insects yeah. than we normally have early, but it doesn't take them long to bounce back. Mm -hmm. So don't <laughs> don't put your sprayer in Spray the air. You know, go ahead and leave it ready to, 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 I, to get a, to use. Uh, the, one, uh, the one thing it might, it might help some, I don't know, it, it might be a surprise cold. You know, it might be real warm. Then get, you know, yeah, cause it'd be 70 degrees one day, and next thing you know, it's down in the 20-something. And that might be a surprise cold. might help some, too. I don't know. 
Yeah. But then they you know, it's a prize code when they get that. But it's hard to kill them little insects. They can hide anywhere. They're tough. Yeah, <laughs> they're tough. resilient. Yeah, they, they, they've they, been they, around forever, so yeah, they learn they to know how to, They know how to adapt to the weather and stuff in that. So. If you don't believe it, go to Alaska or Canada in the summertime. Wow. There's plenty of bugs. <laughs> plenty of bugs. <laughs> plenty of bugs and, and mosquitoes. And they're and well and below zero. Right. Right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, wow. so don't put that, that, that sprayer up. Don't retire your sprayer. Don't retire okay. yeah. Get it out and clean it up and get ready. Okay. Get ready. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Are there some vegetables I can plant right now? What do you think about that? Yeah. You're, yeah, you're, even, late. you're even late on some. Ah. Yeah, some yeah, you, you, need to, you need to look at the, uh, the, the uh, vegetable planting guide that UT has sure. uh, mm -hmm. online. Have it. Uh, they have a table that's got... Uh, a guide to spring planted cool season vegetables and you see the ones I have highlighted uh, those are the ones that uh, that you can plant now uh, February March you can plant uh, uh, cabbage mm -hmm. kale kohlrabi both head and leaf lettuce mm -hmm. mustard onions but for both bunch onions and storage onions mm -hmm. English peas snap peas uh, radishes and spinach you can plant all of those things. And then when we get over into March, uh, you can beets, <laughs> broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, yeah. collards, mm -hmm. chard, turnip greens, turnip roots, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. But it's, you need to make but sure your ground you is not frozen. Frozen, yeah. <laughs> and so, you, know, you can't plant into frozen, frozen grounds so, yeah. and, you, and you don't need to plant into mud. In either. the mud, yeah. In the mud right. either. So you need to make sure you can get your ground in good shape get before shape you get out there and plant. Yeah, that's yeah. what you want yeah. to say, Booker? No, that's, that? that's good. Okay. Make sure that you don't work the soil while it's it mud in there and get it and tilling it up and everything. So, and yeah, that's some good thing you plant. And, and although you call out, I, I like all of them. Mm. <laughs> Every so it makes it different. Every one of them. I like that. I like that. I like that. Mess with that. Don't put nothing in your garden you don't like. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah, I like all those. I can have a garden. All that in there. Yeah. And you need a pretty good sized garden to plant all yeah, that. Yeah, you I sure do. One or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll we'll be out there harvesting for a little while too. Harvesting yeah. all that. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Here's our next question. I got my soil tested, like you said I should. Somebody okay. follow the Find instructions. Them, How about yeah. that? And it said I needed to add lime to an area in my vegetable garden. Do I add it now? Yeah, yeah. I'd go on and put it out there and. Uh, you know, it's very stable. Lime is very stable. Mm -hmm. It's just going to lay there. It's going to lay there until it gets warm enough to work yeah. it in the soil. You might want to, what you might want to do is put about half of the recommendation out right now. And, and then as soon as you can get in there and till it into the soil, you know, put the other half after you, yeah. you know, till in part of it or, or, you know, put, put the other half out yeah. right before you till and uh, mix it up because that'll make it, if you mix it in with the soil, till it into the soil, it'll make it or help it change the pH it'll help it raise the pH a little quicker. Okay. Uh, if you just put it on top of the ground and let the, the rain take it down, uh, you know, it will eventually leach down through the soil and it will okay. eventually raise the pH, but it'll take quite a bit longer. But it's okay to put it, it's not going anywhere. Right. You know, you put it out there, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, and I'm glad you mentioned that because most people are saying till, they don't want to till it in. So I guess you can just still leave it on top. Like you can you leave said. it on top. And it gets weathered in for it'll, the most it'll, part. It'll leach, it'll slowly, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. water soluble. So it will it will slowly you know leach down through the soil, and uh, it'll get tied up very quickly with the you know the clay uh, down there and clay portion of the soil, mm -hmm. and and it will change the pH. It mm -hmm. just takes it a little bit longer. Right. Well, and, and lime is very important too, because oh, yeah. if your pH is off sometime in your soil and your, your vegetable garden, it's gonna tie a lot of other nutrients up in the soil. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna be used by the plant like they should. So you need to get that soil pH correctly, though. And that's why I said we always based on the soil test. And for most vegetable garden, you're looking between 6.0 and 6.5, somewhere like that for most right. vegetables. Yeah, and that's what you, that's what you want to get it to. So do that soil test like the man yeah. did. He did his soil test. I'm glad he uh, followed direction <laughs> there. So he got it tested and that's good thing to do. And that, that's good. Uh, that the pH really very important right. for, for, yeah. for, your, for the it, other nutrients that you have in the soil. And it's easier, it's really easier to raise pH than it is to lower right. it. So if you overdo right. it, and, and really the that most of the time, the only time I've seen a problem with people having a too high of a pH is if they routinely put wood ashes out oh, on their okay. garden site mm -hmm. and just continue to continue to put wood ashes. And wood ashes are very have very good liming mm -hmm. properties, and you can get into a problem there. You can lower pH using sulfur, elemental sulfur, yeah. mm -hmm. but it's uh, a little bit more of a problem, a little bit 
a little bit harder to do. Right. And but like you said, just soil test just every, soil every test, two. Yeah. You don't have to every year. Every two, every two or three years, years you, do that you know, soil get a soil test. test. Okay. We get boxes in the office. They got yeah, the boxes. And they just call and come in and get boxes and everything. Get that soil test. And they be really, 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 really be happy, glad, and they in the long run. All right. Thanks for that good information, fellas. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us a letter or an email with your gardening questions. Send your email to familyplot at wknl.org. The mailing address is Family Plot, 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee, 38016. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next time for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.